Hi everyone and welcome back to the Wasatch Photonics YouTube channel. Today we are going to continue our Enlightened series with a video elaborating on a portion of the user controls introduced in our other video entitled Navigating the Software. If you need help downloading or navigating the software, please check out our Enlightened playlist for specific videos to help you with what you need. The link to the playlist can be found down below in the description box. If you are following along with the product manual, you'll want to jump ahead to section 4.1.1 entitled Transmission Options. If you need a copy of the manual, there is also a link in the description box below. It's important to remember from the previous video that not all user controls described in this video will be available as a default during an Enlightened session. This is because certain controls are specific either to certain spectroscopic techniques or certain types of spectrometers. First, let's talk about the Transmission Options user control. As you can see, this function isn't present in the user controls column. This is because transmission options is only applicable when the user is in reflectance slash transmission or absorbance techniques. Transmission options allows the user to adjust the scale of percent transmission when operating in either of the two previously mentioned spectroscopic techniques. Since we, by default, are in scope mode, let's switch to reflectance slash transmission technique just to see what we're talking about. Right away, the software takes us to the Setup tab, where various configuration options are available to the user. Collecting a reflectance slash transmission measurement will be discussed in much more detail in a future video, so for now, let's just switch back to the Capture tab so we can play with the Transmission Options control. In order to set the transmission scale to the maximum transmission, click the box to the left of Enforce Max. Instead of maximum transmission, you can use the up and down arrows to the right and left of the percentage value, like so. The numeric field itself is editable, so the user can easily click inside the box and edit the value directly. Moving on to light source control, which isn't currently pictured, this is an example of a function that is only available if the connected spectrometer itself has an embedded light source, typically an internal laser. Since I am using a visible near-infrared spectrometer that does not have an internal light source, let alone a laser, this function is not available in my current session of Enlighten. However, the function looks like this and allows the user to manually turn the light source on and off by clicking the toggle light source button shown by the red circle. The user is also able to control the output wattage of the laser as a percentage of the maximum power using either the vertical slider, where moving upwards approaches maximum power, using the up and down arrows, like so, or simply clicking in the editable numeric field below the arrows. Please also note that if your spectrometer does have a laser, the status indicator color for light source will change from green to yellow once it has been enabled by the toggle light source button. Lastly, if the spectrometer contains a laser power calibration, this control may allow the user to switch between setting laser power as a percentage of full power and an absolute value in milliwatts. The detector control function, which is visible on my screen, allows the user to set integration times and milliseconds using either the vertical slider, where moving upwards increases the integration time, using the up and down arrows, or simply clicking in the editable numeric field below the arrows. Detector integration time is the amount of time that the detector is able to capture the incoming light from a measurement, so longer integration times will help detect extremely faint spectroscopic phenomena, such as Raman Stokes scattering and fluorescence slash luminescence emission but also may increase noise and baseline effects by allowing more time for electrical readout noise and ambient light to accumulate. However, the user may want to decrease integration time if too much light is captured by the detector. It is the user's responsibility to determine the optimal integration time and experimental setup. Keep in mind that the vertical slider is deliberately capped at a 5 second integration time, which provides a typical range for most applications. However, if a longer integration time is needed, the user must use the up and down arrows or the editable field to set the desired value. The x-axis feature allows the user to select the units of the x-axis displayed on the spectrum chart. Clicking the drop-down arrow reveals options. Switching the spectroscopic techniques and operating modes from the drop-down menu above the spectrum chart will automatically reset the axis to its default setting for that particular technique. For example, the x-axis for scope, absorbance, reflectance slash transmission, and relative irradiance is wavelength, while the default x-axis for Raman technique is wave number. 
Also, there is a cursor option that, when enabled, displays a red vertical line on the spectrum chart. The position of the cursor will display the corresponding y-axis value in the status bar area shown by the red circle. This is particularly useful when the user is investigating the intensity of more discrete peaks or just certain areas of a spectral measurement. The value of the cursor can be set by using the up and down arrows, or it can be selected and moved left or right by clicking and dragging it to the desired position. Next, we have scan averaging. Scan averaging is one of the most simple ways to improve the signal-to-noise ratio by averaging over time using multiple scans or measurements. To enable this feature, the user can set the number of scans to be averaged by either using the up and down arrows or editing the numeric field shown, like this. When scan averaging is enabled, a secondary text line appears on the control widget stating that the software is collecting X of Y samples. This is so the user can keep track of the measurements in progress. If any changes are done to scan averaging, this will reset the collecting counter to zero. Please be aware that when storing dark and or reference measurements, they will be stored according to the post-processing settings, such as scan averaging and boxcar. Boxcar smoothing is another data processing function that can be applied to measurements. Boxcar smoothing is an alternative to scan averaging if the user cannot afford to add extra time to their experiments. This technique slides a moving average across the spectrum, averaging over wavelengths or space instead of time. The user can set the number of pixels to average by using the up and down arrows or editing the numeric field directly. Keep in mind that the number of pixels must be a whole number. The default is set to zero pixels, which will not apply boxcar smoothing to the measurement. To learn more about how exactly boxcar smoothing is applied to a measurement, please reference section 4.1.7. The baseline correction feature can be used to remove a majority of broadband baseline spectral features so that the detailed spectral features of the desired measurement are more prominent. The pull-down menu offers baseline correction methods such as AIR-PLS, ALS, Dietrich, FABC, kaifas kitfiatek Median Filter, MPLS, Polyfit, Rubber Band, Top Hat, and Wavelet. Enable this feature by clicking inside the box, shown here. Click inside the box for Show Baseline to visualize the features that are being removed from the processed measurement as a spectral overlay within the spectrum chart. Lastly, temperature control allows the user to configure the set point or desired target temperature in Celsius of the detector's thermoelectric cooler, or TEC, TEC. Different spectrometer models support different operating ranges with optimal set points, so the temperature control is automatically range limited to the correct temperature range for any spectrometer. This means that the tech can't be overdriven in either direction. Generally, detectors that are thermoelectrically cooled to lower temperature are capable of detecting fainter signals since they generate less thermal noise and are able to maintain a lower, steadier baseline. The user can set the set point by using the up and down arrows, slider, or editing the numeric field to the desired value. It's not recommended that temperature control be disabled. However, the user has the option to do so if they wish to compare the baseline with and without thermoelectric cooling. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below or please visit our website to contact us. We hope that this was instructional in helping you better understand user controls within the Enlighten software. Have a great one.